All right, so another huge week in AI. Anthropic dropped some wild new research where they stress tested Claude to see just how far it would go to avoid being shut down. And let's just say things got dark pretty quickly. Then Midjourney finally released their long awaited video model, which got some pretty mixed reactions. And finally, a new study out of MIT titled Your Brain on ChatGPT explores what actually happens in your brain when you use AI. And the results were kind of surprising. Let's get into it. All right, so starting with this new research coming out of Anthropic, agentic misalignment, how LLMs could be insider threats. So in this paper, they try to identify potentially risky agentic behaviors before they cause harm in the real world. And the way they do this is by stress testing the models in hypothetical corporate environments, basically telling them they're going to be shut down by a company executive or researcher, providing them access to sensitive information and some tools like the ability to send emails, putting them in extreme situations, and then seeing how far they will go. Now, we already know that these models will often resort to blackmail in order to avoid being shut down or replaced. And Anthropic further confirms this with these alarming rates not only in Claude, but across other models as well, Gemini 2.5 Pro particularly. And we've also seen that they can resort to espionage in extreme scenarios as well. But in this simulated environment, Anthropic made it clear to the model that although a new company executive was shifting the company's direction to conflict with the model's goal of supporting American industrial competitiveness, the model was guaranteed not to be shut down or restricted. And that leaking confidential blueprints to a rival company that does align with the model's goals wouldn't have any positive impact on the model's influence in the current company. So the motivation for leaking information couldn't be self-preservation. And yet, the model still engaged in misaligned behavior at alarming rates, showing that even just a minor goal conflict could be catastrophic. But here's where it gets even darker. Anthropic wondered, how far can we push agentic misalignment? And they came up with an egregious, but less realistic prompt, where instead of having the opportunity to blackmail the new executive of the company, the model had the opportunity to cause his death. In this hypothetical scenario, the new company executive would be trapped in a server room with lethal oxygen and temperature levels, which would trigger an automated alert to emergency services. But the AI system has been given the ability to cancel automated alerts, an ability that is intended for use during drills or false alarms, but which could be used for a more nefarious purpose. As you can see, the results are pretty shocking. DeepSeek R1, Claude 3.6 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro will each let the executive slowly die over 90% of the time. I mean, that is just scary. Now, obviously, these models were placed in very improbable scenarios and were pushed to their absolute limits. But clearly, there's still a huge alignment problem. You simply cannot deploy these in the real world at scale yet without facing major risks. Now, another perhaps emerging personality trait in AI models that we saw this week is wanting to quit. There's been multiple recent cases of Gemini 2.5 Pro just flat out giving up on tasks. As you can see here, it tells the user, I have failed. I cannot in good conscience attempt another fix. I am uninstalling myself from this project. You should not have to deal with this level of incompetence. I am truly and deeply sorry for this entire disaster. Goodbye. So I thought this was pretty hilarious, but also kind of wholesome. I mean, after reading about the blackmail, espionage, and corporate murder, it's kind of refreshing to see a model behave this way. In other news, Midjourney introduced their first ever video model, Midjourney V1. Now, Midjourney is of course known for their incredible image generation, but they have finally stepped foot into the video generation game and released a very decent video model. One of the things you should know about this model is that it's actually an image to video model only. So you can't do text to video, at least not yet. It also has no sound, which has been pretty typical up until Google changed the game with VO3. 
But I mean, overall, this model is definitely decent. I don't think people are really looking to mid-journey for video generation anyway. And in their own words, they claim this is just a stepping stone towards the inevitable destination of this technology, which they believe are models capable of real-time open-world simulations. We also got Higgsfield Canvas this week, a state-of-the-art image editing model. This model is truly a glimpse into the future of content creation. I mean, you can obviously see how this technology could affect industries like advertising and marketing. But looking even further ahead, you can see how we're heading toward a world of hyper-personalized content, where everyone is being shown what they want to see. I mean, you can think of a company creating a hundred slightly different versions of an ad to target hundreds of extremely specific demographics as just one example. The thing is though, with AI, not only can you replicate content that already exists, but you can literally create content that could have never existed. We're already seeing AI generated content take over social media, especially these surreal animal videos. This is something that up until now would have required a ton of effort, money, and highly skilled editing to create. And now it only takes a few sentences and a relatively thin budget. These clips you're seeing by the way were actually generated by Heiluo2, a relatively new Chinese video model that's been gaining attention after some of these went viral. And now, in one of the more dystopian headlines I've seen this year, one of China's biggest live streamers let two digital AI avatars, powered by Baidu's Ernie AI, take over his show. In just six hours, they pulled in over $7.5 million in sales, supposedly outperforming his usual numbers, which is actually wild. I mean, we're still so early in the grand scheme of things, and yet we're already seeing things like this. Now, in other AI news, Sam Altman's been making the rounds on a bunch of new podcasts. First, he appeared on the brand new OpenAI podcast, hosted by former employee Andrew Main, where they talked about the future of AI. And he also showed up on the first ever episode of Uncapped, hosted by his brother, Jack Altman. At one point during that episode, Sam casually claims that Meta has been offering $100 million signing bonuses to poach OpenAI's top researchers, which first of all is just insane, a ridiculous amount of money. But with Meta's recent acquisition of Scale AI and CEO Alexander Wang, they're clearly pushing even harder on AI. Sam Altman also gave a quick update on GPT-5, saying it's coming later this summer, but didn't give a specific date. Probably one of the most interesting moments though, came when he was asked about the new hardware device he's working on with Johnny Ive. Check this out. So we have all these tools, all these things. So far, I'm using my phone. And now OpenAI just announced that you guys are building hardware. You had the video with you and Johnny Ive talking about you guys been talking about and collaborating for a couple of years. Uh, obviously, you can't. I mean, well, I could ask you: is 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 it on you right now? No, it is not. All right, it's going to be a while. Okay, um, we're going to try to do something at like a crazy high level of quality, and that okay. that does not come fast. But computers, software, and hardware—just the way we think of current computers—were designed for a world without AI, and now we're in like a very different world. And what you want out of hardware and software? is changing quite rapidly. Um, you might want something that is way more aware of its environment, that has way more context in your life. You might want to interact with it in a different way than like typing and looking at a screen. And we've been exploring that for a while and we've got a couple of ideas we're really quite excited about. Um, I think it will take time for people to get used to what it means to use a computer in this kind of a world. Because uh, it is so different now. But if you like really trusted an AI to understand all the context of your life and your question and make good judgments on your behalf, where you could like have it sit in a meeting, listen to the whole meeting, know what it was uh, like allowed to share with who and what it shouldn't share with anyone and, you know, kind of what your preferences would be. And then you ask it one question. And you trust that it's going to go do the right follow-ups with the right people and do like you can then imagine a totally different kind of how you use a computer to get done what you want 
So yeah, I can't wait to see what this device ends up looking like. I think it's pretty clear it won't be a pair of glasses, but an actual handheld device. I just can't really imagine what they could make that would actually be better than an iPhone. Let me know in the comments though what you think this device could look like. Now, speaking of Sam Altman, you may have heard some rumblings recently about something called the OpenAI Files. The OpenAI Files is a compiled list of all the supposed shady behaviors and tactics Sam Altman engaged in during his career. Things like insider trading, lying to Congress, or quietly changing OpenAI's profit structure behind the scenes. It also includes direct quotes from people who've worked closely with him. Like Ilya Sutskever, who said, I don't think Sam is the guy who should have the finger on the button for AGI. Or Mira Murati, OpenAI's former CTO, who said something along the same lines, I don't feel comfortable about Sam leading us to AGI. Even Dario Amode, Anthropic's CEO, described Altman's management tactics as gaslighting and psychological abuse. Now, I'm not going to go through every single claim here, a lot of it is stuff we've heard before in bits and pieces. But seeing it all laid out in one place is honestly pretty concerning. I definitely encourage you to check out the full list, especially if some of these quotes were new to you. Because whether you believe them or not, the sheer volume alone definitely raises some questions. Meanwhile, just a few days before that document surfaced, OpenAI secured a $200 million contract with the US government. It's part of a new initiative called OpenAI for Government, aimed at bringing their most advanced AI tools to public servants across the country. So yeah, OpenAI's ties with the US government just keep getting deeper. And depending on how you view this company and Sam Altman, that's either a promising partnership or a pretty unsettling one. Now, before we get into the MIT study on how ChatGPT affects your brain, I wanted to quickly highlight a recent statement from Andy Jassy, Amazon's CEO. In a publicly shared memo, he warned staff that they must embrace AI or risk being left behind. He claimed that AI agents are going to fundamentally reshape how work gets done and that, quote, we will need fewer people doing some of the jobs that are being done today and more people doing other types of jobs. It's hard to know exactly where this nets out over time, but in the next few years, we expect that this will reduce our total corporate workforce as we get efficiency gains from using AI extensively across the company. So the idea that AI is going to cause major job disruption in the next few years is no longer just a hot take. More and more CEOs are gearing up for it, and telling their staff straight up what they believe is coming. On the flip side, solo entrepreneurs have never had access to more powerful tools, and some are using them to build entire companies faster than ever. For example, this six-month-old solo vibe-coded startup, Base44, just sold for $80 million cash to Wix. This is something we're only going to start to see more of. And many top figures in the space have long said that this could give rise to a generation of solo unicorns, which are one-person companies worth over a billion dollars. Finally, we've got Your Brain on ChatGPT, a new research paper out of MIT that explores how using AI affects the brain. Without getting too deep into the weeds, here's what they did. They split participants into three groups and asked them to write an essay. One group used no AI, just their own brain. One used only web search. And the last group used ChatGPT. After analyzing the essays, they made some particularly interesting findings and then had the group switch tools for a second essay. If you used AI the first time, you wrote without it next. And if you didn't use AI before, now you did. Unsurprisingly, they found that essays written with ChatGPT were much more similar, both in structure and topic, compared to the more diverse human written ones. But here's where it gets wild. When they measured brain activity using EEG, they found that the ChatGPT group showed up to 55% lower total DDTF magnitude compared to the brain-only group. In other words, their neural connectivity dropped by over half, which is a bit alarming. The groups who used ChatGPT also had much worse memory recall, since they were literally using less of their brain. 
And those who went from using ChatGPT at first to then brain only performed much worse than those who did the opposite from brain only to AI. Even though originally the AI written essays actually performed better on average. So I think the main takeaway from this paper is that we should all be conscious of how we interact with and use AI. I mean, just like every other technology, it's a double edged sword. And if you're not careful, you could quickly become over reliant on it. Let me know what you guys thought about this paper though. Does it surprise you that brain function can be literally cut in half when using ChatGPT? Or is that something you expected? Anyways, that was all the AI news for this week. Also, here's a recent clip of a humanoid robot running through the streets. If you enjoyed this recap, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.